Yo, what's up guys? Here is 30 minutes of useful League of Legends information. And if you haven't already seen all my other useful information episodes, make sure to go check those out as well. All right, let's get into it. Did you know that Rift Herald's eye doesn't actually open if it's below 15 health? In other words, sometimes it's actually faster to wait a few seconds when it's still above 15% for the eye to open instead of just continuing to hit it. Of course, this depends entirely on timing because if you just hit the eye, it's probably best to just keep attacking. But if the eye hasn't opened for a while, then it's fairly likely it'll open up in the next few seconds if you wait just a bit longer. Also, while Rift Herald doesn't directly state how much health it has left if you ping the herald it will tell you exactly what percentage it's at in the chat if you have the space groove blitzcrank skin try using control 4 to bait out a flash or an ability before you hook the laugh animation or control 4 looks somewhat similar to his hook animation so you may be able to fake some people out with it and then follow up with the hook right after you can also do the same thing with dark star thresh though it isn't quite as convincing as the blitz skin still who said league of legends isn't pay to win speaking of useful things today's sponsor is raid shadow legends and let me tell you if you don't know what raid is yet you're kind of living under a rock raid is first off giving away a butt ton of stuff so make sure to watch till the end but for those who don't know it's a tactical turn-based battle game and pretty much has everything from pve to pvp content just like league of legends there are hundreds of champions you can collect endless amounts of strategies that you can use to win games and billions of ways that you can customize and build your champions now if i had to spell out why you should play raid using raid i would say the r stands for the constant regular updates that you get in the game the a stands for arena a place you can fight other people i stands for index because you can see any champion in the game and what their skills are and d stands for doom tower where you can take on crazy bosses however the best part is that it's raid's fourth anniversary and because of that there's a lot of sick stuff going on right now i'm talking dedicated offers free gifts promo codes events and a brand new fusion event where you can get your hands on anniversary themed legendary champions for starters right now you can use the promo code four years raid to get four skill tomes legendary four energy refills 400 energy and 400k silver and if you have amazon prime there are special drops available until march 30th but it doesn't end there either because if you're a new player who uses my link or scans the qr code here you'll get a free starter pack with all of this extra in-game loot worth 30 so seriously, go download Raid for free now, and thanks Raid for sponsoring this video. Did you know that Graves will actually do more damage to the turret if he's aiming at an enemy behind the turret than he would just normally attacking and targeting the turret itself? Now obviously someone isn't just going to sit there the entire time and let you take the turret for free, but if you're laning versus someone and have a huge wave pushed in and they're just trying to hide behind their turret, try targeting them instead and you'll get a lot more damage out. Did you know that there are Teemo lineups in League? This isn't the most useful thing in the world, but if you ever find yourself as a level 18 Teemo with nothing better to do, you can click here and then right here on this dot and start chucking shrooms. Then the shrooms will bounce their way one after another all the way across the map past your red buff all the way past the dragon pit and all the way into their jungle until it finally reaches the other team's blue buff. This is probably a lot easier to do in earth but if the right situation presents itself it may be worth giving it a shot. Keep in mind though you do need to be level 18. Did you know that even if the scuttle crab is taken you can still hug the wall and be out of vision if you're coming through the baron pit. Yoshik actually did this at worlds in the DRX versus Gen G game last year and all almost got away with it too. Unfortunately, he was spotted the very last second, but it's still a pretty cool little trick. Okay, so in case you didn't know, the cooldown on wards change depending on what level you are in the game. However, if you were to place a ward and then level up, the longer cooldown won't actually get shorter automatically, and it will only apply once the original cooldown is finished. However, there is a trick you can do, and that's when you back swap out your trinket for a sweeper or another vision item, and then swap back to the trinket, and it'll automatically refresh the cooldown to what it should be based on whatever level you're at. It's kind of a lot to remember and kind of hard to remember but if you do you could get some free wards out of it if you're ever thinking about buying any of these skins on the screen instead of buying them individually from the shop go to the champion bundle starter packs because you can get them there for a cheaper as well as a bunch of other stuff too for example dragon slayer vein is 975 rp by itself the starter pack has the skin as well as other skins like hired gun lucian and frosted ezreal and the champions themselves and it only costs 650 rp the same story goes for the jungler starter pack the mid lane starter pack the support starter pack as well as the top lane starter pack so go save yourself some rp this is a graph which shows how much of a difference mastery points or more specifically mastery of a champion can affect your win rate going into a game overall it's pretty clear that the more mastery points you have on a champion the higher of a win rate you'll have but the most important takeaway from this information is that you should never first pick a champion in rank if you're serious about winning which sounds pretty obvious but for some reason so many people still do it probably in your rank games similarly here's a graph showing which roles in league are impacted the most from a counter pick. The darker the color, the more of an impact being counter picked has. Top lane and mid lane are both significantly affected, which makes sense, and support is the least impacted role from a counter pick. Main thing you should take away from this is that if you really want to give yourself the best chance of winning, let your top and mid lanes pick last if possible, especially if you're bot. Did you know that Blitzcrank's W can actually build up stacks on Jack's show once he begins slowing down? In other words, the one drawback from his W could actually be useful in certain situations. Did you know when playing Warwick, you can actually use his Q to 
to dodge sleeps like Zoe's bubble if you time it right and hold it down. Similarly, you can also use Warwick's Q to go over small walls. If you're struggling as a top laner in the matchups like Darius, Singed, or Teemo, consider taking second wind in Doran Shield as Bleed and Poison will actually heal you a bit and may help you with the laning phase. When playing Kane, try queuing into walls to shorten the dash so the second part of your Q goes off faster. This can actually cut down a decent chunk of time on your clears. This little trick also works with Vayne's Q if you tumble into walls. If you need more evidence on why you should buy more control wards, well, you should check this out. This is a chart that shows on average how many wards are purchased per game, and as you can see, the more wards you buy, the higher the rank. Iron players buy an average of 0.78 wards a game, while challenger players buy an average of 2.82 wards a game. So basically, if you buy three wards, you'll be challenger for sure. Most people know that your W on Belveth will reset your Q in the direction you hit them. But did you know you can actually reset multiple directions at the same time if you hit multiple targets and are in the middle of them? So next time you see them all grouped up, try W flashing into their team and you can get a knock up as well as get a reset on multiple angles of your Q. If you're interested in climbing and ranked, here are some useful tips. There was a case study done a while back where thousands of players ranked games were monitored and some interesting data was dug up from doing so. For starters, they found that it takes approximately one to three games to fully warm up and be at your best, so it's never ideal to hop straight into a ranked game for your first game. Players that lost three games or more in a row statistically dropped their win probability an average of 3%. And the same effect was true for wins. If you won three or more in a row, your win probability would jump 3% for the next game. Of course, most of this has to do with the mindset and the mood you're in, but it's also hard not to believe that loser's queue and winner's queue actually exist to some extent. I know it's pretty obvious, but to sum it all up, keep playing if you're winning and take a break if you're losing. Did you know that Braum can actually block Karthus's ultimate if he uses his E in the direction Karthus is at? It has to be in his direction though, or else it won't work. Here's a chart that shows each of the summoner spell cooldowns, along with how some CDR assets can affect them like Ionium Boots and Cosmic Insight. For example, on Summoner's Rift, having both the Keystone and Ionium Boots can bring the flash down from a 300 second cooldown to a 230 second cooldown. Did you know that in ARAM, you can actually take the other team's portals? I don't know how useful this really is, but if you're looking for a quick escape like this Hecarim, this could be your key. A lot of people underestimate how much vision really matters in League, especially as a jungler. For example, sometimes it's better to wait an extra second for maybe a minion to die so the enemy can't see where you are. Basically, exactly what Pioshek did here in the DRX game when he waited for the can minion to die and then went across the lane. Missing gold is bad, but missing experience is worse, and if you ever wondered how far you can actually stand and still get experience, it's about the same range as an Echo W or Heimerdinger W at 1600. In other words, you can sit back a lot further than you probably thought. A lot of people remember that Blitz's ultimate does damage and is a silence, but I feel like some people forget that his ult can actually remove shields, something that can actually be pretty handy, especially with today's champions. Since the new release of the jungle pets, I've seen a lot of players make the mistake of attacking the larger monsters in the monster jungle camps too much, like on raptors, instead of switching to the smaller ones. Now, this doesn't apply to every jungler since some do more AoE damage than others, like Fiddlesticks or Kane, but for champions who do more single target based damage, like Shin Zhao or Warwick, it's best to attack the big ones a little and then switch to the smaller ones. Doing this opposed to taking out the big ones first can save you seconds of time. Did you know that slash deafen command not only blocks chat messages from you and your team, but it also informs your team that you've muted yourself? This can particularly be useful so you don't see them pausing every so often in the middle of the game where they're clearly typing to you. With that being said, if you are going to deafen, you should probably do it at the start of the game so it doesn't seem toxic. You can also, of course, undo this at any time as well. Similarly, you can also use the command slash mute self, which will prevent you from using text chat, but will also let others know you've muted yourself still. If for some reason you're playing Teemo, you can use blue trinkets to bait people into hitting shrooms by placing the ward next to them. That way, when they go to hit the ward, they'll probably run into your shroom. If you're enjoying, please consider hitting that sub button, helping me get to 200k subs and puppy. Thanks guys. Here's a map that shows all the esports locations as well as where each league resides around the globe. I've showed this a long time ago, but the old one had a few errors, so I've cleaned it up a bit. Still, a map like this can help a lot in seeing where the leagues actually are. Did you know that once Rengar hits level 6, he can actually use Senna's E to jump out of it? Meaning Senna-Rengar combos could actually be pretty deadly. When you're taking Baron as Maokai, it's actually better to stand behind Baron instead of in front of it due to his passive. You'll get more sustain because it'll give your passive a shorter cooldown, and it'll also help you do more damage because it'll shorten your cooldowns of your abilities as well. Did you know that when Ornn upgrades an active item, the cooldown on that item is refreshed. In other words, if you have something like Shirelia's, then you can basically use it for free right before he begins upgrading. As you can see, after it upgraded, the cooldown completely reset, and now I have it back up again. Did you know that as a Kali, you can actually teleport in your shroud and the other team won't be able to see the animation? For perspective, this is what it looks like for the other team, and it can actually make for some really confusing escapes. Did you know that on Rek'Sai, you can actually go through the tunnels when you're on the other side of small walls? For example, if I make a tunnel here, and if I do it right, I can still use the tunnel from the blue buff to the wolf camp even though my tunnel is on the opposite side of the wall. This in itself can make for some really great escapes since the other team can't just stand over 
it and make your tunnel disappear. This could particularly be useful to steal objects like dragons since no one in the dragon pit can destroy your tunnels on the other side. This is kind of common knowledge, but a lot of people don't realize that if you attack from an unworded bush, it reveals everyone in the bush. So if you're trying to set something up, maybe don't walk into where everyone is waiting and then start auto attacking. On a similar note, if you hit a ward that's disabled, it will grant vision for the other team for a brief second. So stop hitting wards that are disabled when taking objectives or you're just giving them free information. Did you know that after three wards on the map, if you click on the next ward or hover over it, the game will actually tell you which ward will be deleted in order to replace the new one. We'll label them as one, two, and three, and the red one is the ward that will be yeeted. Additionally, since I'm assuming your wards won't always be right next to each other, you can also look on the mini map when hovering and the red X will pop up over the ward that will be deleted. So finally, no more having to memorize which one you've placed first. Did you know when you're playing Annie, you can actually use your fourth ability when one's mid cast to get your stun to still proc. For example, if you use your Q when you only have three stacks, but you use your E while your Q is mid flight, you'll still get your stun on your opponent, which can really help catch people off guard since almost everyone tends to back up when your fourth stack is up. Did you know if you're the one who summons Rift Herald, you don't actually have to stand next to Rift to get the gold from the plates once it charges. In other words, you can just drop Rift and start recalling instead of sticking around for no reason, unless you're trying to keep pushing, of course. If you're out of wards, you can use Malzahar's Q for vision, but more importantly, you can also use his W for vision as well. You can spawn his minions over small walls, which can actually grant you vision for a decent amount of time. Did you know that Nico can ult and then use hex gates and it'll go off mid transport? This is mostly useful for summoner's rift if you're trying to hit people taking Baron or Dragon though. Did you know you can actually use Ryze's teleport to teleport some objects like Shaco's boxes? I don't know how often this will be used, but at least now you know. With Ramus, it's actually possible to avoid Lilia's ultimate with his own R. You just need to use it right as the sleep is about to proc and then it will completely cancel the ult. By the way, this was actually sent in by one of you guys, so if you got any useful info, feel free to send it to outsidejokelol at gmo.com. A lot of people forget that each of the dragons actually have pretty different stats, and if you're a jungler, this can be crucial information to have to help you decide whether or not you should take an objective. Cloud Drake, for example, will do the most damage because it has the highest attack speed at 1. Hextech Drake does the second most damage, having an attack speed of 0.75. Mountain Drake, on the other hand, is the weakest at 0.25 attack speed, but it takes the longest to kill because it has extra armor and magic resistance compared to the other Drakes. Anyways, if you're interested, here's a comparison of all five Drakes on the screen, and it's definitely worth checking out. Did you know you can actually heal sitting just out of the fountain? I see a lot of people waiting in the middle of the fountain to heal and get mana back, but if you're just waiting, it's better to be as far out as possible so you can get back to lane faster. Unless, of course, it's past 20 minutes because after 20 minutes, home guards kicks in and you can heal exponentially faster in the back of the fountain. This is some pretty basic advice, but it's also something a lot of people ignore, and that's when placing awards, place them depending on the jungle you're facing instead of just mindlessly dropping them around your lane. For example, if you're mid and playing versus exact jungle, place the ward in the pixel brush instead of the bush right outside of your lane. Wards are useless if you don't have enough time to react to them once you see them, and if someone like Zack can just jump onto you from a distance, you're never going to be able to react in time from just the side bush ward. This honestly applies to most junglers. Even if you're going up against someone like Ramus, you're going to have a hard time reacting in time to dodge the ganks if you just place a ward right next to you. But if you see him coming from the river, you can give yourself a lot more time to react. This is especially important when going up against champions that can go invisible like Wukong or Shaco. If you're struggling with accidentally misclicking the enemy instead of yourself for an ability like Lissandra's ultimate, then try using alt plus your ability instead to guarantee yourself cast. Now instead of frantically trying to click the right person, you can just alt R to guarantee you hit yourself. This also works for other champions as well. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to sub and I'll see you next time. A massive shout out to my tier three patrons, Stefan Noctek and James, and a massive shout out to Set Right for being a tier four patron. And thank you so freaking much to everyone else who's supporting me. All right, bye.